Welcome, saints of God. This is Pastor Herman Washington of Shiloh Church in Rockville Center, New York, welcoming you to uh, this uh, study in the Word that we're going to share with you. We're grateful to our God for the wonderful privilege of being allowed to um, uh, be online and to share our message with the body of Christ at large. I'm trusting that the Lord is uh, blessing you wherever you are and that you are being kept by his power. I pray that you would also experience his peace during this very difficult season, uh, particularly the members of our Shiloh Church family. I want to thank God for each and every one of you. I want you to know that Pastor misses you. I miss you. And I'm grateful to our God that uh, we are able to uh, communicate at least uh, this way. Uh, I am doing fine. Uh, things are working well to God's glory. And uh, Sister Washington is doing well as well. And uh, we are thankful to our God for your concern for us over the last couple of weeks, your prayers. Uh, we want you to know that God has answered them and kept us by his grace. My prayer for you, along uh, with other things, is that our church family is kept safe during this very hard time um, that none of you would come down with the virus and if you do that you would pass uh, through it as a season and that you'd come out on the other side uh, stronger, wiser and um, that you would give God glory uh, as he is moving you through this time. We want to take some time um, now to uh, look into the word of God and see what the Lord uh, wants to say to us on this particular uh, season and uh, get a sense of his direction and in his will for us. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I thank you for the wonderful privilege of uh, being your child. We are glad that you have chosen us for yourself and we ask you, dear God, now to sanctify the moments that we spend in your word for your own glory and uh, your own honor and that you would somehow turn everything that happens um, toward your good. We love and appreciate you, Father, and we thank you for all that you've already done and we're trusting you to do um, in our lives. We ask you now to sanctify your a word to our hearts and minds, and then my mind and my mouth, that it might bring glory to you, and say and think those things that will honor you. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Um, we want to look in the book of Habakkuk today, the book of Habakkuk, the Old Testament prophet Habakkuk, and um, we're considering his message to, um, uh, to us as we uh, look at um, him and his word, Habakkuk chapter 1 and verse 1. Uh, there you'll find these words, pardon me, the burden which Habakkuk the prophet did see. Um, has been our custom. Uh, we want to look at this particular section of scripture. We want to take our time and move through it. I believe that God uh, has uh, prepared a message for us all that will benefit us during uh, this difficult season. Um, and so, with that in mind, uh, what I want to do with this broadcast is at least lay the foundation for what we're going to be talking about and dealing with over the next couple of weeks. Um, and uh, that is do a um, background study of this particular portion of Scripture and uh, prepare our hearts to receive what the Lord is going to say to us. We want to do that background study this way. We're going to talk about the testimony of Habakkuk, <clears throat> the times of Habakkuk, and the test of Habakkuk. Um, he is the, uh, the last of the minor prophets uh, that would um, speak to uh, Israel before um, their captivity in Babylon. It is actually the, um, the southern kingdom of Judah uh, that uh, God uses uh, Habakkuk to minister to and deal with 
and um, he is a great prophet of God and a very important uh, section of scripture and we don't want to miss the message of, of Habakkuk. So we begin this overview and background study with the testimony of Habakkuk. And what we mean by that is we're trying to spend some time identifying who he is. Uh, he is um, not as familiar to the saints as, say, Isaiah or Jeremiah. He's not as familiar as Ezekiel and Daniel. Um, but his message is important to us, and it is important for us. Uh, and so we want to spend some time identifying who this fellow named Habakkuk really is. Um, and I want to do it in four different ways. I want to approach it in four different ways. First of all, I want to deal with his person. We're dealing again with the testimony of Habakkuk. We're dealing with his person first, then his personality, uh, then his place in the record of Scripture, and then his presentation. And that is very simple, simply uh, what um, or how, rather, he presents his message uh, to us uh, in his word. Uh, first of all, his person. Habakkuk <clears throat> is uh, seen in the text of Scripture. Uh, first of all, all we know about him is found in his book. Uh, and uh, we can dig up some things uh, from what we see in the text of his book. First, his name Habakkuk means embrace. Um, it, uh, it means to cling. So he is uh, seen in this passage as, a, as an embracer. That would probably be very helpful um, in dealing with the message of his book because it would then suggest that... Um, he would be one who would be uh, getting a hold of Judah and wrapping his arms around them. Um, so his name means embrace. The second thing that we know about him for sure is that he is identified in his, um, in his book as a prophet. And so we know that uh, he was called to this prophetic office um, to fulfill the will of God concerning uh, the nation of Judah, and uh, he is uh, uh, called as the prophet that would, uh, going back to his name, embrace them. The third thing that we uh, know about him is that there is a strong possibility, based on uh, the closing verse and the closing clause of his book, um, Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 19, that um, Habakkuk very well may have been a Levite um, in his background, in his family background, he may have, been, may have been a Levite, because the closing clause of the book talks about uh, what he has written, and then talks about he, um, it being a, 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 a song uh, that was performed on his own instruments. So there is a very, very strong possibility uh, that he was um, of the Levitical uh, background. And so uh, there we have the person of Habakkuk. He is, uh, na his name means to embrace. Um, he is a prophet of, in the order of the prophetic um, of ministry. And there's a strong possibility that he uh, may have been a Levite as far as his family line is concerned, and there's a possibility he may have been a priest, uh, could have been a, a priest. Uh, so his person, but now his personality. Um, as, it consider, as we consider, rather, uh, this fellow named Habakkuk, it is important that we know that his book reveals a man that is passionate about pursuing God. Um, he pursues God because he has questions that only God can answer. And so he, he needs these answers from God 
to more effectively represent God. And as a result of that, um, Habakkuk gives himself wholly to this idea of pursuing God. So he's a man, in terms of his personality, that was given to this idea of um, pursuing God. He brings his questions to God and he is not afraid to ask God those questions. So that's his person and his personality. But then thirdly, his place. Habakkuk's book is found amongst those books that are made, um, that are found rather, is found in a section rather of the Old Testament that has been designated the Minor Prophets. So one of his books, his book is seen in the collection of the books that will be identified as the Minor Prophets. Now, when we identify Habakkuk as a Minor Prophet, as well as Hosea and all the others, um, it is not to suggest that somehow their message is minor. That's not the issue. What we're talking about is the length of the book it is not as lengthy as, say, Isaiah or Jeremiah or Ezekiel's prophecy. Uh, but the message is major found amongst the minor prophets. And so we want to encourage you to keep that particular truth in mind. It's a major message that is found in um, the midst of the minor prophets. So that's his place. But then... Finally, his per presentation. What exactly is this book about? And um, how does um, Habakkuk uh, present his, his message? This book is not like the other prophetic books in that. It is not written from the standpoint of of the prophet speaking for God. It is, um, it is a different take on the prophetic message uh, found in Habakkuk's book in that uh, under normal circumstances, what we see is we see the prophets uh, going to the people and speaking to the people for God. And as a, as a rule, uh, the prophetic uh, office and the priest's office kind of functioned this way. The prophets spoke to the people for God. Um, the priests spoke for the people to God or with God. And so those two dynamics are kind of seen in the, um, in the rank and file of the prophetic office pretty much all the way through. Habakkuk is different. Habakkuk is a prophet. He is assigned to that responsibility. But what you find is that while the prophets have a tendency in terms of their ministry to speak for God, Habakkuk, in his work, speaks to God. Habakkuk is committed to the idea of hearing from God to make sure that he represents God well when he speaks to God's people. And he wants to make sure that um, he is uh, clear on what the Lord's message is to his people. So what he does is he speaks to God at length in this book and literally brings us into this conversation that he is having with God. Now, the conversation grows out of where he is in his life, um, at a specific point in his life. He is literally um, in the process of working through his issues with God. He does not want to work through his issues in front of the people, he doesn't want to work through his wish, uh, uh, work through his issues with the people. 
He literally wants to uh, work through his issues with God so that he might be more effective as he deals with God's people. Um, and there's a very, very important uh, difference and distinction between um, the prophet Habakkuk and the other prophets. God um, has given him this assignment, but Habakkuk wants to make sure that he fulfills the assignment accurately and clearly, and so he needs clarity from God uh, that he might be able to fulfill God's will and purpose for his life. So that's the testimony of Habakkuk. Now, the times of Habakkuk, and that is, when exactly does Habakkuk um, fulfill his ministry? When does he come on the scene? Well, <clears throat> Habakkuk comes on the scene, pardon me, it was sometime after the death of Josiah, the king of Judah. During King Josiah's reign, there was a great revival and restoration of uh, the things of God uh, to the people of God. You remember that um, it is during Josiah's time that the text of Scripture tells us that um, the scroll of, of God's word, the law, was found in the temple. And when uh, the prophet read uh, that scroll, that word, to Josiah, he jumped up off the throne, ripped his clothes off, and repented and began this restoration, uh, renewal, if you will, in the uh, land of Judah amongst the people of God. Uh, they returned to the sacrificial system. The priests were reinstated. The priesthood, rather, their ministry was reinstated. The... Um, False gods and idols were removed uh, from around uh, the, the, uh, the, the kingdom. And the people of God, because of their king, were literally drawn back into a relationship with the living God. So there was a great revival movement under uh, Josiah. After his death, what we find is that the vast majority of those uh, renewals were actually more superficial than actually took root. Because within about a 10-year, 5 to 10-year period, the people of God have gone back uh, to their ways of wickedness and uh, gone back to their ways of disobedience. And they began to um, do some things that were contrary to the will of God and return to their old ways um, as if uh, the work of Josiah had not been done at all. Um, in fact, it is so bad that um, Second Chronicles chapter 36, beginning at verse 14 down to verse 16, uh, sounds like this. Moreover, all the chief of the priests and the people transgressed very much after all the abominations of the heathen. That means they went all the way back uh, to the days of as if um, Josiah hadn't been around and uh, they reclaimed some of the things that they, par the parents and grandparents were doing uh, under a fellow by the name of Manasseh uh, who ruled before Josiah took the throne um, and uh, polluted the house of the Lord which he had hallowed in Jerusalem. Listen to verse 15. It says, And the Lord God of their fathers sent to them by his messengers, that is, his prophets, rising up betimes and sending, because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. Verse 16, But they mocked the messengers of God, and despised his words, and misused his prophets, pardon me, until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people. This last clause is very important in verse 16, 
2 Chronicles chapter 36. Here's the last clause. Till there was no remedy. The idea is, is that God had gone as far with them as he was going to do in this instant, at this juncture, and at this time. Um, they uh, had already, uh, for the most part, written their own consequence because of their acts of foolishness and disobedience. And so God uh, determined that he was going to send uh, forms of correction to his, to his people. It is into this scenario and in this setting that God raises up the prophet Habakkuk and has him come along with a message for his people. But Habakkuk is concerned in light of what he sees and he's so concerned about what he sees that he wants to make sure that his own heart is settled with God before he gets out there and confuses everything with his own issues. He wants to be straight. He wants to be clear on what God is saying in his life and his heart so that he might represent, again, that he might represent God well. That's the times of Habakkuk. But now finally, the test of Habakkuk. As I've already said to you, Habakkuk is different in his presentation from the other prophets. The difference being that the prophets spoke for God to the people. But Habakkuk speaks to God before he goes to the people. There are some issues that he wants to settle in his heart and in his mind. It's not him being having reserve, reservations about fulfilling his responsibility. That's not his issue. He's going to do what God called him to do, but he wants to settle some things in his own soul so that he might be effective in his ministry in dealing with the people of God. And so he has some critical questions that he wants to settle in his heart and mind so that he'll be prepared to deal with the people of God and deal with them more effectively. So what we see in Habakkuk, in his book at least, is we see him moving from faith to faith. The idea is when God captures his heart, and calls him into this prophetic office. Habakkuk has a knowledge of God. But what Habakkuk needs is to move from where he is with his knowledge of God to a more settled conviction about that knowledge of God. And so what the book of Habakkuk helps us see is that transition period from faith to faith. Um, Habakkuk begins with questions, chapter 1. But Habakkuk ends, chapter 3, verse 18, verse 17, 18, 19, he ends with praise. The question is, how does he get from his questions to his praise? And the point that God is dealing with is, is that he's literally taking him from that place by developing his faith in God through the process of private communication and conversation. And so God is dealing with Habakkuk and he's leading him to a deeper understanding, a better understanding of how God operates in the world. And so there is this, um, this, this dynamic where um, Habakkuk raises these questions, and as he's raising these questions, God answers him. And in answering him, Habakkuk ends up with more questions. But the good news is, is that God does not shy away, nor does God rebuke 
the prophet for his questions. He does not rebuke Habakkuk for being where he is. Instead, what he does is he carefully and he very clearly moves him from one place of faith to another. Ultimately, the goal is to bring him to the place of worship and thanksgiving that will cause him to have a heart that is so clear on what God wants to do in the lives of the people that no matter what happens, no matter what he sees, he may not understand what God is doing, but he knows who God is. And the information, the knowledge of God alone is what keeps him buoyant as the storms of life begins to overwhelm the land. And so here we come, uh, Shiloh, and those of you who are sharing with us, we come to this very important prophecy of Habakkuk. And this is where we're going to be over the next couple of weeks. We want to encourage you to read the book. It's a very short book. It takes you about seven, eight minutes to read. Um, you'll be able to go through it real quickly. And then get some notes and take some notes and work some things out. And we're going to spend some time uh, dealing with this idea because I believe this is the message that God has for us during the season that we're in. I love you. I appreciate you so very much. And I praise God for all that he's doing in your life, even in the midst of the things that we're going through right here and right now. Understand this, there is absolutely nothing too hard for our God. He's got you in his hands. And in the midst of all of this, he's working for his glory and our own good. My beloved, hold on as we look at this word and let's see what the Lord speaks to our hearts. God bless you. See you next time.